Hi, my name is Audrey and I'm here to tell you about my job. So I am a software developer. A software developer writes code uh, that makes computers do things. So computer programs can be websites or apps on your phone or services that you can't see that work on special computers called servers. So this is Servers are computers that talk to each other behind the scenes and we, we don't really see them doing it. Uh, writing code for a computer is kind of like writing a script for actors in a play. Except, you know, a computer, it's not actually very smart. It can't think for itself. So you have to tell it exactly what to say and what to do. So with an actor, if you're writing an actor, a, a play for a human actor, you might be able to say that the knight should say, we ride to victory and then exit stage left. And that's it. That's all the instructions you would have to give. And the human actor would know that they should say out loud, we ride to victory, and then walk off uh, the stage of the left side of the stage. But when you're giving instructions to a computer, you have to be much more specific. It would be like saying, Knight, activate your voice and set the volume to loud but not shouting. Say the words, we ride to victory, and then turn, and uh, while you are still visible to the audience, step with your left foot and then your right. Left right, left, right, left, right, until you're no longer visible. That's a lot more instructions. And depending on what kind of programming language you're using, you might have to be even more specific than that. You might have to make sure to tell the computer to inhale first, like to make sure that you have enough air to say the whole sentence. Apps on your phone are really fun, and it's easy to think of them as just magical. But every single thing that you see and everything that they can do has been written as instructions by a programmer. So one of the things I worked on recently was called uh, it was an app called SnipSnap. And it might be an app that your parents have heard of uh, if they like saving money with coupons in stores. So SnipSnap is an app that will remind you to use a coupon when you go into a store where you, where you have a, a coupon saved. And you don't have to bring the paper coupon with you because you can take a picture with the SnipSnap app and it will store that picture for you. You can actually take the, the picture to the cash register uh, to save the money when you get there. And um, you can also search for coupons that other, people's have shared, uh, other people have shared uh, to save even more money. So it's a really it's a really great app. It's typically for grown-ups, uh, but it's it's a it's a good way to save some money. And I worked on that for a while. But today my job is writing code that other app developers use in their apps and writing that special uh, server code that other people's apps and servers talk to. So I speak three languages: English, obviously, uh, French, and German. But when I write code, I write code in a dozen different languages. Java, Ruby, JavaScript, Objective-C, Swift, Python, Bash, and HTML, and XML, and Groovy, and CoffeeScript, and PHP. Uh, you don't need to know what those mean, uh, but there are a lot of them. And they are as different as English, and French, and German. And a lot of people think that programming is all about math. But I think it's more like learning to speak a new language. There's syntax and vocabulary, and there's even culture around these languages that you need to understand in order to really understand the language and, and use it well. And just like spoken languages, you can express the same ideas in different computer languages. And sometimes it's easier and sometimes it's harder. What I really love about being a programmer is that uh, it combines my two favorite things solving puzzles, and being creative. The writing code and figuring out why code isn't working, which is something that you spend a lot of time doing when you're a programmer, um, is a lot like solving a puzzle. And it takes a good detective to figure out what happened when something breaks. Writing code is also very creative. Of course, you get to design websites and, and app screens, uh, which is very visually creative, but even in the code itself, there's creativity in how it's written. There are patterns that we follow uh, and, and you know, elegant structures uh, to be built. So if you like puzzles and you like creating patterns, uh, you should really think about programming. I think you might like it. So I work uh, from my office at home here in Philadelphia. 
Uh, I work on weekdays, normal normal hours, kind of nine nine to six uh, every day. Uh, but the team that I work with uh, is in Seattle, so they're on the other side of the country, and that can make things hard because you know I wake up long before they do. You know, our time zones are three hours apart, and so I go to bed before they do. Sometimes when I'm going to bed, they're still working. Uh, but, you know, we're able to work through it, and we use a lot of tools like video conferencing, which is kind of like this, uh, and we do text-based chat throughout the day to stay in touch, and it works really well. So my typical day is a little over eight hours long. I wake up, I take my son to preschool, and then I come home here to my office. So I will do a few hours of work before my team wakes up on the West Coast, because they're in Seattle. When they get in, we have a quick meeting, and then we all get to work for a few hours. But even though we might spend some time at our computers by ourselves, we are always working together. Uh, we're chatting, we're reviewing each other's code, and we're asking and answering questions back and forth. I work with a team of about 12 people, and that's really common in software development. Typically, uh, there's one manager who keeps all of our work organized, and then many different people that do different kinds of work to actually build the software. Some people will write different kinds of code. Um, other people uh, keep our computers running. And yet other people focus on visual design. So what should it look, what should the product look like? Or they do product design, which is thinking about uh, the features that we should have so that our customers will wanna pay us money for it. And I meet with everyone on my team each day for one, a status meeting. Uh, so we get together and we stand in a circle and we go around and take turns saying what we did yesterday and what we're going to do today and what, if anything, that we need help with. We will plan our work uh, in two-week cycles. We call these uh, sprints. So every two weeks we get together and we pick an amount of work that we want to commit to finishing by the end of that two weeks. And we prioritize our work based on what we learn from our product designers and what our, from our customers and what our customers think is most important. And we will work on those important fixes and important features first. So I work at a company that's actually pretty big for me. This is, um, there are about 10 teams like mine at my company. So everything that we do, all the code that we write, needs to work well together. So there are meetings between the managers of each of the teams to talk about what the teams have finished and what the teams are going to work on next, and what, if anything, they need help from, from the other teams. It's very important that we work very hard and that we talk openly about what we're stuck on or what we need help with, because the business and our customers are counting on us, and we all have the same goal, to build great software for our customers. So it's okay to say if you don't know something or if you're stuck, because we will always come together and help each other figure it out. And we work hard, but we have plenty of time to have fun too. Uh, you might hear stories about programmers that work long, long days and they sleep at their desks. And I've never worked at a place like that. Uh, people that I work with have families and they like to do fun things like go rock climbing or play music uh, after work. So it's a lot of fun. On the weekends, I like to volunteer to teach other people how to code. I've worked with a group called Tech Girls here in Philadelphia to teach middle school girls about programming and electronics. And last weekend, I taught a group of women how to make apps for Android. And there's a wonderful community of other programmers and different groups have meetings from time to time to share the things that we are working on and what we have learned and to teach each other. Um, I make a lot of friends that way, and I learn a lot. And being active in my community like that is an important part of being a professional software developer. So thank you for listening to my story, and I look forward to answering your questions.